M&J presents the M&J Variety Show. Hello, I'm Jay Real, the J in M&J Audio Theater. I'm sitting beside Mark Sawyer, the M in M&J. And what you're about to hear is something that we did a long time ago with the intention of putting on radio, but never really followed through with. Well, what year did we do this? 1987. We did this in 1987. It's uh, it's a mixture of uh, short skits um, based on uh, popular television shows, popular game shows, uh, the, the 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 structure of them, and. Uh, and uh, with uh, our own warped sense of humor. And uh, also, you uh, we, we will include something new, something recent, but we won't tell you what it is. We'll just put it all in the mix. and uh, It'll be a little surprise for the end. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That, that's a good way of putting it, I suppose. And so I guess there's really uh, nothing further to say other than just to enjoy the show. And uh, it's been a long time coming, getting this on radio, but uh, finally we... We've realized our dream. Well, howdy, everyone. This here's Big John McFarlane. And Cecil Ferris. And welcome to Farm and Film Celebrity, Celebrity Blow Up. Up. Boy, we're going to have fun today, ain't we, Cecil? Yeah, because today we got a guest whose name is Neil Burke, and he's from the rock group Run. Well, let's get our show started. Here comes Neil right now. Have a seat, Neil. How you doing, Neil? Uh, I'm doing pretty fine. Fine? We're doing fine, too. Yeah. Let me see some. Yeah. We're doing fine. We're doing real, real fine. fine. Yeah, me too. Hey, 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 Cecil. Look yeah. at there at that boy's hair. Yeah. Got that pony that long ponytail. That long look at the ponytail. Just like, like a girl. girl. Just like, like a, a real girl. girl. Oh, ooh, ooh. oh my ooh, goodness. Look at that got face. Got a man. Ooh, tell us, demon, Neil. man. Say, tell us, Neil. Are you a girl? Ooh, he's not saying nothing, but he sure is making a face. Hey, hey, Neil, won't you go up there? We got your drums set up there. Sit down and favor us with a number. He's got he's a member of a rock group there. Yeah, one of them long haired hippie rock groups. Yeah, of course I'd sooner drink a, a cow patty malted than to listen to that kind of music. But well, our show pleases everybody, so go on up there, Neil, and favor us with a number, won't you? Look at him go, Cecil. Yeah. Look at them ponytails dance. They're dancing, aren't they? Looks like they're about to come loose, too. Look, his hair's coming loose. Woo! Look at him sweat, Cecil. He's starting to sweat good. He's starting to sweat real good. Woo! Well, look at his face, Cecil. It's red. It's real red. Woo-woo! Cecil, look at him go. Look at him go. Look at him go. Look at him go. Look at him go, Cecil. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to. I think he's going to. about all the time we got now for Farmer Film Celebrity Blow Up. Yeah. Be sure to join us next week where we'll have another special guest yeah. that'll favor us with some special talent yeah. and then blow up. Blow up real good. <laughs> well, for now, this here's Big John McFarlane and Cecil Ferris saying may the good Lord take a liking to you and blow you up real good. good. <laughs> Boy, I like you, Cecil. I don't up like you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play Win or Die! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. On today's show, we have one very lively guest. But before we get to the guest, we'd like to explain the rules to you here at Win or Die, which are very simple. You either win or die. Let's meet our first contestant, Mr. Barnold Watts! Come on! 
Come on out here, Barnley. It's real nice to be out here. Say, Barnley, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm a little nervous. Uh, yeah, yeah, my name is Barnold Watts. I'm from Mahia, Texas, and I own me a ranch just out there uh, near Point Enterprise, which is near Mahia. And, uh, and, and uh, we, we're, we, we've had some financial difficulties just lately. Uh, if I don't come up with $5,000 by tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to go on welfare. Well, you're in luck today, Barnold, because yeah. today you're playing for $5,000. Well, well, that's convenient then, right? <laughs> Tell me, have you uh, seen our show before? I sure have. As a matter of fact, I was just going to mention that. We, we, we got us a White's Auto Store downtown, you know, about five or six blocks from where I live. And every now and then we go up there and watch us the television, you know. And they have it on Channel 6. It's just outside of Tulsa, you know. And uh, they only keep it on that channel. And I, your show is on there, and we watch your show. Uh, well, that's very flattering. We don't like it, but we watch it. They well, don't let us turn the TV. Okay. Well, uh, but just one more question I wanted to ask you before you begin your show. You said something earlier about dying. Could you explain that to me? Well, let me tell you how the next game is going to be played. Okay. Today's game is going to be called The Game of Glass. Game of Glass. Well, listen to that music. What's all that creepy music mean? Okay, oh, Mr. Well, there's, there's a pretty girl opening up the curtain. Right, right behind that curtain. If you look on the floor, you will see a stretch of broken glass running about 10 feet in length. Yeah, do you yeah, see that? Okay. I sure see it, yeah. Now, what you're to do is My to walk from working. one end to the other to the pretty girl and without screaming. So Barefoot. Well, now, wait, what you're saying is I got to take off my shoes and socks. Yeah. Walk from this end of the glass to the pretty girl. And not scream. Right. Well, shoot. I can do that closing my eyes. One with one hand tied behind my back. Shoot. And I'd follow that girl into the gates of hell. Let's get this game started. This is going to be simple. Right. <laughs> Easiest five pounds I ever made. Okay, here I go. Yeah, that, this ain't nothing at all. Walking. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hey, hey wait a minute. Hey, this here's real glass. This here's real glass. You didn't tell me it was real glass. I thought it was fake. I, I, the game showed you, damn fool. Ah, my feet. My feet are cut. I bleed. I bleed. This is a game show. I didn't know you ain't supposed to hurt people. I'm going to fall in the street. Ah! 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 Well, nobody here at Winter Die goes home empty-handed. Isn't that right, Bill? <laughs> That's right, Jim. Mr. Watts will be going home with a one-day supply of medicated band-aids. Just our way of saying thanks for being on Win or Die. Also, Mr. Watts' surviving family will be receiving the home version of Win or Die. <laughs> Fun for the whole family, complete with five pounds of broken glass. Well, that's about all for me, Jim. I hear we've got a little special guest in our show today. Tell us about it. Yes, that's right, Bill. Today we have, as an extra special guest, charismatic game show host, Chuck Willery. Wheel him on out, boys. Come on. Well, how's it going, Chuck? <laughs> Chuck could say a few words, but we've got him bound and gagged, hanging from a rope on a dolly. You see, good old Chucky boy here has agreed to play a game here at Win or Die, but unfortunately, due to our shortage of time, we're going to shorten the game up a bit. As a matter of fact, we're going to skip the game and go right to the payoff. Come on, no, Chucky, uh, are you ready to play? Me, me. Oh, that's very good, Chucky old boy. And now, Chuck will be participating in the Boiling Pot of Lead game. Yes, that's right. We are towering him five feet above the Boiling Pot of Lead, and when I give the signal, he's going down. All right, guys, bring him on down. Ladies 
and gentlemen, I've just gotten news that the game show Scrabble and Love Connection have been canceled. Well, that just about does it here for Win or Die. Join us next week for another thrilling, lively edition of Win or Die! <laughs> Jim, you old joker, you. Well, that gets gross out of our competition, doesn't it, Jim? <laughs> that old Hollywood squares. We don't have to worry about those wimps. Well, this is Bill Marlin saying that Win or Die has been brought to you by Tex Grundy Productions in association with Thompson's Explosives. If you want something blown up and blown up real good, call Thompson's Explosives. This is Bill Marlin saying for Win or Die, so long, folks. This is the city, man. Los Angeles, California, man. A community of crime, rape, and drug dealers, man. I'm here to enforce the laws, man. Even though many may say I shouldn't, man. I carry a badge, man. It's sometime around 10 o'clock a.m., man. And I reported very late to work as usual, man. It took me about three hours to find the place, man. Maybe they move it every day or something, man. Anyway, man, when I arrived at headquarters, man, I accidentally ran my 1970 Ford Camaro into the sheriff's office, man. I swear, man, I just didn't see the wall, man. Maybe it was the blues, man. After an hour of intense verbal abuse from my superior officer, man, I dropped some more lewds in my coffee and went over a list of potential stakeouts for the day. <laughs> my superior officer told me not to bother, man. <laughs> Such a joker. Anyway, I don't have a partner like everyone else on the squad, man. No one would work with me, man. So I'm kind of the lone ranger of the department, man. I cry sometimes, man. Anyway, man, I found a good lead for a bust, man. It, I, it was suspected that drug extortion ring was at Rex's pharmacy in East L.A., man. It had been reported that several juvenile delinquents were threatening the clerk's lives to extort various colorful drugs, man. I decided to investigate, man, even though my superior officer told me not to, man. <laughs> he said I was fired, man, and asked me to return my badge. <laughs> He's such a joker, man. You know, it's nice to have a superior officer with a sense of humor, man. Three hours later at 2 p.m., I had located Rex's pharmacy, man. I waited outside jamming to Zeppelin in my unmarked, severely damaged Ford Camaro for suspicious characters to make his move, man. Then I remembered, man, I've got to talk to the clerk to get a description of these hoodlums, man. And as I was walking in the door, a seedy youth walked in at my side, man. When I approached the clerk, man, she pulled out a gun, man, and shot me, man, in hey, what the you, face, hey. man. Pretty bad, man. <laughs> Apparently, she suspected I myself was a drug extortionist, man, and shot me, man. It's oh, a good thing wow, I carry around man. a tank of nitrous oxide, man. Oh, wow. I have it for emergencies, man. <laughs> and sometimes, man, hey, I use it even if I'm not in pain, pain man. <laughs> Six months later, man. I was out of the hospital and ready to find these demented Jews who were a menace to our great city, man. My superior officer felt kind of sorry that I was in the hospital, man. So to cheer me up, he played a practical joke on me, man. <laughs> when I got back to the, to the, to the uh, office, man, my desk had been cleaned out, man. And my nameplate had been removed. <laughs> it kind of cheered me up, man. It's nice to know your superior officer feels for you, man. Anyway, man, 
It was my conviction that these that justice be served, man. So after staking out for 10 days, man, I spotted and identified two youngsters that stored in drugs from Rex's pharmacy, man. I followed them to a hotel room on the Sunset Strip. I had my gun in hand and was ready to make the bust, man. The only problem was, man, that they were ready too, man. As soon as I opened the door, man, and yelled, police freeze, they opened fire before I could, man and shot me in the face, man. man, my face, man, my freaking face, man. Hey, where's my hoodlums, man? Where's my Just be
there, I'm Elmer Corn, and welcome to Film Focus with your host, Elmer Corn and Cecil Ferris. My regular co-host Cecil is not here today on account of he's got the summer flu, and he ain't gonna be able to show up for another couple of weeks, I'm afraid. So, the producers of the show thought it might be an interesting idea if they got us a, a co-host for this time being with a different perspective on things. Yeah. So what they did, they got us a fella from Seattle, Washington, I believe. Yeah, and he's right. sitting here right here beside me. His name is, uh, oh, I, I'm sorry, sir. Could, yeah. could you say what your name is one more time? My name is Rushhead. Um, yeah. uh, Mr. Rushhead. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. you sure you're in there? All, uh, all I can see is hair. Right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm cool. Well, uh, well, okay, I'll, I'll take your word for that, sir. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, anyway, uh, they sent us, uh, to the mall down the street mm -hmm. to see that movie, The Fugitive, with Harrison Ford. Right. And I mean to tell you, it was some sort of film. Yeah. It, it's one of the best films I've seen in right. some years, I'll tell you. I have only one complaint, though. Movies just mm -hmm. ain't the same kind of experience as it used to be. Man. What with the prices of the popcorn say, and, man, and the small say, little man, screens and say, it. dude, say movies, huh? man. They're they're What's a that? mind trip, man. I mean, um, well, I, they're a whole capsulized world, um, man. In like two hours, man. Well, you, you live. Film, man. I mean, yeah, well, um, it's I, I, a trip. Man. Well, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. I guess in a way it is sort of a trip, isn't it? It's kind of a trip into oh, another world. Just right. for just for those couple of hours, you kind of right. get involved in it, kind of get into the the, the you know, kind of get into the story. Right. But what about paying that six dollars for a jumbo box of popcorn yeah. now? now? Now, surely you can't, you know, you can't hold well, that sort of nonsense. Man. You don't eat that crap, man. Well, that I, I popcorn, like popcorn, man. Yeah, well, it, it, I mean, you gotta be careful what you put in your body. <laughs> well, now, now, pardon me, fella, while I laugh at that, but I mean, it, what you're smoking there smells just like burnt tires or something. Man, you don't seem to be too careful about what you're putting in your body. See, man, I don't smoke what? nothing that don't come from the 
earth. Well, man. well, all right, I'll give you that. This help. stuff is herbs, man. Herbs, it well, It comes okay. from Mother Nature. Oh, well, man. all right now, all right, but don't get upset. Man. Now, that's all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to upset you. It, it, it appears we kind of veered off from the subject at hand anyway, wow. which is the film. <clears throat> The Fugitive with Harrison Ford. Yeah. Now, the best right. part of this movie was just right there at the beginning. Harrison Ford is on his way to death row. See, he's, he's yeah. sentenced for a crime he did not commit. Right. Well, you know the story. Remember, remember the TV show anyway? Yeah. So he's no. in a bus, and they're no, heading towards death row. Well, there's an accident, and the bus rolls onto a train track. Oh, trains, man. Huh? Now you've got me started, man. Uh-oh. Uh-uh. I mean, trains are like steel serpents traveling uh-huh. along the Earth's capillaries, man, seeking um, knowledge, man. Well, uh, well, it's interesting you should bring up serpents. Because that re- it reminds me of a snake. And, and a couple of weeks back, me and Cecil were out bass fishing. And we saw a 16-foot water moccasin. What? I swear to goodness, we could have walked on water getting back on land. That was a huge thing. Man, hey, uh, it, it dude, was, what are you grooving on? Well, I'm talking about this big old snake. Here, I'm trying to share a piece of my soul, man. I mean, I'm giving you a piece of my flesh, man. I don't tell everybody about my innermost thoughts, man. Well, I'm just trying to... I tell you about serpents, man. A steel serpent seeking knowledge, man. Can't yeah. you see the symbolism, man? Well, it, it looks All like a you snake. come back with, man, is some crap about bass fishing, man. Yeah, well... I mean, go back to Camp Hick, man, and huh? tip some cows or something. Man. Oh, well, now, feller, I'm just about a mind to take offense at that. L- listen here, oh, listen, George, well, why'd you get me this this thing here? Well, I mean, no. this is what comes out of Seattle, Washington. Them grunge people, oh. you get a rush head is what you get. Something like this here. Dad gummit, I just, I want to just quit. Dad no, gummit. no, say chill, dude. Huh? Say my eyes are dilated, man. Well, what Why don't I? you finish my doobie for me, man? Well, well, yeah, I could use a cigarette right now. You got yeah. me all nervous. There you go, man. Dad gummit, I just... Uh... Wow. Oh, Dad yeah. I can't see, see these, man. These herbs you got rolled up here yeah. ain't no kind of tobacco I ever smoked. Yeah, man, this is not tobacco. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Say. Yeah. Now, now I'm starting to see what you're talking about, about that steel serpent, that train. Right. Yeah. Man, yeah. Man. So, uh, mm-hmm. anyway, to mm-hmm. conclude, uh, the fugitive is, wow. well, how can I describe it? It's a... Uh, it's a mind trip, man. Yeah. It's mine. That's what it is. It's a mind trip. Right. So anyway, right. for me and <clears throat> Mr. Rushhead here, right. goodbye and so long until our next installment of yeah. Film Focus. Peace, man. Ed Gum, I want to go club hop. This has been another installment of M&J Presents. Kind of an offbeat installment, I might say. The names and characters portrayed in this production are fictitious. Any similarities with actual people, living or dead, is purely coincidental. The Film Film Blow Up segment was not our idea, but it is a continuation of an idea created by SCTV. We do not claim ownership of the idea. In addition, M&J do not advocate the use of any illegal drugs in any form. Thank you for listening to our dive into the M&J Audio Theater archives in this installment of M&J Presents. A production by M&J.
For correspondence, send to MJ Audio Theater, 923 East Main, Mejia, Texas. Mejia is spelled M E X I A. The zip code 76666.